Welcome to the Ian Bounsfield Experience. I'm glad you're here. This series of podcasts are just things that come up in my mind when I'm thinking about playing, when I'm thinking about teaching, and general thoughts about music. There are some things here that I hope you'll find really useful. And don't forget, if you've got any comments or if there's anything you want to discuss further, go to ianbowsfield.com. How to be a student. Some years ago, I was asked to do um, a video on 10 tips for trombonists, how to study the trombone. And the video actually was quite popular. It's got, I don't know, 100,000 views on YouTube. So I thought it'd be good to talk about this perhaps in a little more detail. Um, you know, when we want to become a professional trombone player, um, we have to, or a professional musician, we have to realise that uh, we're in business. We're developing a product here. And we need to look at it that way. Now, what is the product in our case? The product is you. You are the product. You are what is being sold. Um, so many students in my experience think that um, becoming a good instrumentalist and uh, playing well and being able to play the tunes and being able to play the excerpts better than anyone else and then you become a professional. You know, because it can be that simple, it can. But in the most case, we're dealing with a multi faceted approach of becoming the best you you can be so every day when you go into a room not just when i go into a room we have to work on making ourselves the best musician the best work creator the best business person and the best colleague oh and um also yeah we need to become a good instrumentalist. And it kind of is, it was a little bit deliberate that I left that a little bit further down the uh, list of requirements. We also need to go into a room and develop ourselves as an all-round artist, as an all-round musician, appreciating the arts from so many different perspectives. Now, to have a business plan, to know where we want to go, to know what we want to become. First of all, we have to establish where we are right now. And um, one of the um, strong yet also weak aspects to pedagogy in the last few years, if this is not handled correctly, is, you know, if we are all unique creative individuals who never do anything wrong in our life, then we don't really know where we are, because that's not true, is it? We all make mistakes, we all get it wrong. And as soon as a teacher says to you, that was fantastic, when you know it really wasn't. And I don't mean false modesty. You, you know, actually, you made a bit of a mess of it. And when a teacher says, great, you then kind of lose your sense of or grasp of reality as to what's good and what's not. So we have to establish where we are right now. Now I could tell you right now where I am with my practice, the state of my practice, and you know what kind of form I'm in, and what I would need to do, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So where are we? What do I do well? Well, let's say for example, you know, someone has a good high register, makes a nice sound. You know, they express themselves really well, and that's important to reinforce. When you're looking at a business, let's look at the assets. Well, this is what I've got. I can do this, I can do this. Um, I'm very popular with my colleagues. I enjoy the social interaction. These things all go towards making us more employable. And so we can then, but then we say, mm, we need to develop a little bit in this area at my low register for example let's say he's not particularly great or someone can't play fast fine you have identified what you do really well and you've identified the areas of your playing that you need to improve and work on um, and you know <laughs> quite often i say to my students you know i've got good news for you uh -huh. and the good news is you can't do this can you and we're going to fix that. We're going to work on that. This is my roadmap 
for your development in this area. This is how I think you should go about fixing that. Um, and this is the kind of way you should also be thinking. These are my great things. I'm going to reinforce what's great. This needs to be stronger. And this is how I'm going to do it. Because so many of you go into a room in the morning and um, get your instrument out and blow a bit of air through the mouthpiece and, you know, it's like, well, you don't really know what you're doing or where you're going. Um, Christian Lindbergh put something up on YouTube, the daily practice schedule of Christian Lindbergh or something like that. And um, if you haven't seen it, you should take a look. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's exactly the opposite of what the majority of students are. The guy gets up and he knows exactly what he's going to do. All day. 23 minutes on this, whatever works for you. 23 minutes on this, half an hour on this. Go for a run, eat this. Time to read a book. And it's all planned out. That guy... He's Mr. Business Plan. He knows what he's going to do. And, and although I say right now that is somewhat extreme, I spoke to him about it and he said, you know, ah, oh, yes, but I know you are the same. And I said, no, I'm not actually. No, I'm really not. Um, but I am going in that direction and we all need to. We all need to have those acts, that, that sort of element of, okay, this is what I'm going to do and this is how I'm going to fix it. Rather than wandering into a room and saying, what did Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so say I had to learn by next week? Which, I guess, leads me on quite nicely to this very important point. Don't put the, res the responsibility for your success on the shoulders of your teacher. I am... Um, an avid pedagogue. I'm obsessed with making a distance, a difference to people, you know. Well, I'm obsessed. I'm, on, I'm an obsessive personality type. So if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to want to do it to the ultimate. And that includes being the best teacher I possibly can for every individual who stands in front of me. But we as teachers cannot pick you up, put you on our backs and carry you to where you want to go. Of course, we do have some responsibilities and we take our responsibilities extremely seriously. But the responsibility for your future lies with you, not with us. I am here as a teacher to walk down the road with you, side by side with you, on occasion holding your hand and on occasion telling you what you need to fix. <laughs> but we can't do it for you. It's your responsibility. Now let's look at what we need to do to grow as musicians. Let's imagine you're quite young. You're 12 to 14. You need to form your ideas, your impressions, musically. And we do that by listening. That's the simplest way of doing it. I'm not telling you anything new. This is not rocket science. All of your teachers tell you to listen. But to whom and what do you listen to and for what are you listening for? What are you looking for when you're listening? Now, I often have a um, grumpy reaction when I say there are no great musicians playing brass instruments, particularly from euphonium players and tuba players. They get very upset about this. Um, we all like having, you know, these uh, brass playing Conferences that are a little bit like Star Trek conferences. I like Star Trek, by the way. Um, and we, we go to these conferences and somebody plays a bit of Vivaldi or Rameau or whatever and everyone says they're a great musician and then everyone drinks a lot and they go home and everyone's happy. Yes, I'm not sure, great as that is, and we all love it, I'm not sure that is the way I would like to influence young people as to how to become a great Musician, And I'd just like to qualify that a little bit. Um, when I'm talking about great musicians, I'm talking about Carlos Kleiber, Maria Callas, Luciano Pavarotti, Daniel Barenboim, Claudio Abbado, um, Michelangeli on the piano, Guido Kramer. If you don't know these people, by the way, you should. It's part of your musical education. Um, 
And if you don't understand my Northern English accent, write me a, a message and I'll write those down for you. <laughs> um, these are great musicians, and that's what I mean. When it's, It might sound I'm, like I'm being a little bit harsh when I say there are no great musicians playing brass instruments. Compared to the top, 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 top people is what I mean. There, there may be. There are, there are some phenomenal players on brass instruments. And by the way, I'm absolutely... Uh, <laughs> including myself here as well, you know, that, you know, when I say there are no great musicians. So we need to curate. That means to guide as teachers. And that means that you need to find out who are the seminal figures in your instrument, whether you're on the trumpet, whether you're on the violin, who are the seminal artists to whom we wish to be exposed to become the best instrumentalist we can possibly be. When I was a kid, I listened to... Uh, in fact, what did I listen to? Hang on a minute. When I was a kid, there weren't any trombone records out. We didn't have CDs. There weren't any. I think there was this Russian guy playing the Rimsikorsikov with the Russian Navy Band. And... Uh, then, by the time, I think Branimir Slokar did something in the, in the 70s, Ralph Sauer. Unfortunately, I never got to hear the Ralph Sauer recordings when I was a kid. I wish I had, because they're great. But do you see what I mean? You can't just click on YouTube. And I say to students, you know, well, uh, well did you listen to the Sulek? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, and, and which recording was it? Oh, something on YouTube. Or now, even worse, on Spotify, where people don't even look to see what it is. You know, you must be very careful as to what influences you put into your head because young people are like sponges. They will soak up anything, particularly when someone is 12 years old. Of course the person who's, who they're listening to is better than them. Yeah, but is it the ultimate? Is it what they should be aiming for? I'm not even sure we should be forming our influences by listening to brass players. Listen to Maria Callas. What is it? What is it in? Is it in the sound, in the emotion, in the way that she sings a phrase that makes you want to cry? What is that incredibly base human communication that someone like Pavarotti had? Or how certain musicians, how Carlos Kleiber, Carlos Kleiber, you can, it's with a K, you can type into YouTube and see him come back to him. Wonderful, incredible stuff. There you can learn. But let's get back to reality. Your basic business plan might start with learning your scales. <laughs> let's not forget the building blocks. But you need to identify these things. Now, I, year after year, get um, students walking through my door, my door. And for me, a student is a customer. I want to do what the student wants to do. I want to help a student fulfill their dreams. And it usually goes like this. So, what do you want to do with your life? I want a job. A job doing what? Playing the trombone. Oh, where? In an orchestra. Oh, which orchestra? Don't mind, really. Oh, any particular country? No, no fast, really. <laughs> and that's what I hear time after time. Now, okay, it's a fairly well-trodden path. I did that. Um, and it's a reasonable business plan to have. We, in the last 50 years, have only had one full-time trombone soloist. Um, one successful trombone soloist. The rest of us have all either had a job in an orchestra or a job as a professor. So that's been, you know, maybe our main source of income. And then we've done solos on the top of it. So as much as I would love, I would love someone, and it does happen, someone walks in and says, I want to be a, just a soloist. I've got one right now, and it's fantastic. Because I change my teaching completely to, to suit the needs of the student. Uh, and incidentally, if you want to be a, a soloist, you still have to have a phenomenal 
integrity of articulation and sound. Have a listen to Maurice Andre. Have a listen to Dennis Brain. He's amazing. The same basic abilities that you would need to play in an orchestra. So, let's look at it. What do you need to become to be a professional orchestral musician? Well, first of all, you need to understand the literature. You need to understand what you're going to play. That means you spend an hour a day finding out which the best recordings are of Bruckner's Eighth Symphony, and you listen to those recordings for a week. That means you find out which are the seminal recordings of the Brahms symphonies, the Beethoven symphonies, etc., 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 and you listen to each one of those. You get to know the repertoire. I'm not talking about learning the excerpts. I'm talking about learning the repertoire. Excerpts should go as following. This is Brahms. I know Brahms. I've studied the symphonies. I've studied the Deutsche Requiem. I've listened to all of the great recordings. And the sound world of Brahms is this. These are some notes on the trombone. I'm now going to play Brahms. Rather than going into a room and blindly practicing Brahms' Fourth Symphony, to which you have no intimate knowledge. So you have to listen. You turn up on time. You dress in a reasonable fashion. You learn how to interact on a successful basis with your colleagues. The university or your college, college is the best place to start. I'll let you into a bit of a story. A bit of a secret. I had a colleague in Vienna. And um, I didn't like him. And he didn't like me. And we only realised, really, in the last week... <laughs> <laughs> we both left in the same week and uh, I didn't invite him to my uh, leaving party and he didn't invite me to his <laughs> and we were both glaring by our absences now in the 12 years we'd been there we had a very good relationship it was perfectly cordial we worked together on a very professional level you don't have to be best friends with people, but you do know how to learn to live with them because when you're in an orchestra, when you're in a professional environment, that's the name of the game, I'm afraid, folks. And a lot of people, unfortunately, in German orchestras don't learn that. And I meant German, not Austrian, although it's not great there either. It's part of the education. You have to learn to be the person who you turn up to work and people are happy to see you. And... I'll be honest, I had to work on that as well. We all have things we have to work on. I like telling jokes. I love the social interaction. If I'm honest, I do miss hanging out with the guys probably more than anything else. But you can work on that when you're a student. You can start working on how do I speak to my study colleagues? How do I interact with them in a way that's successful? I'll give you a starter. If you don't think what you're going to say is going to have a positive effect, don't say it. Um, so let's look at the other things that go into becoming a student. Becoming the all-round artist. Are you reading? Are you forming your imagination by studying great authors? Are you studying scores? Are you sitting with scores? Are you sitting with the score to Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony and just looking there? You don't need the intellectuals to teach you about this. Sit with the score and look at it. It's not rocket science. And you look at it and you realise that every single bloody note from the beginning to the end is linked and you see the journey. And that changes you. That changes you as a person. It changes you as a musician. Are you looking at art? Are you allowing time to go to art galleries and look and and just see what a picture says to you. Are you interested in the food that you eat? Is your diet good? Are you healthy? If, you're not, if your body's stressed, if you're not in a good way, your brain will not be working properly and your body will not be working properly. Work out what the right diet for you is. I'm going to go into that in much more detail. As brass players, as instrumentalists, we're athletes. Are you fit? Are you in good shape? So look at all those different ingredients. And now, when you go into a room, you have a plan. You know which areas 
of your playing are already good and you need to cherish that and nourish that and you also know what you are going to do from 8 o'clock in the morning until at least 6 o'clock in the evening because being a student is also a profession. You are professional students and you need to plan your day out and to grow and develop in all its different elements. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. If there are any issues that you found particularly interesting, don't forget to contact me and always go to uh, ianbowsfield.com for lots more interesting stuff. Thank you.